The stirrer was an experiment of mine really. I originally wanted to have a, a, a place that would host films that I wanted to make and it didn't really, I didn't really set out with the idea of, of setting up a dedicated news website for Birmingham and the West Midlands but that's what it became because there was clearly an appetite out there for people who felt that not enough digging, not enough questioning of the mainstream and the establishment was going on. Uh, and that led us to some very interesting stories. On one occasion I got an email from somebody who I'd never heard of suggesting that uh, new kinds of CCTV camera were being installed in Moseley and in Spark Brook. And they were very uncomfortable at, about this because they felt that there had been no consultation or they weren't aware of any consultation with local people about these CCTV cameras. Uh, so uh, having had this email, which was the lead uh, that I needed, which, which just gave me a fresh story. Why has there been no consultation with local people uh, about, uh, about these CCTV cameras? Uh, I then started liaising with this person who wasn't a journalist and, and who had no real interest in the story over and above the questioning of why we got these CCTV cameras that we've never heard about. I then started just asking one or two questions of contacts that I had, local councillors, police press office in the West Midlands and this story then snowballed. Once I started posted the original story uh, people again came out of the woodwork as they as they often do when you have a website people volunteered information saying that these are not ordinary cameras they include automatic number plate recognition cameras, ANPR cameras and there was a suggestion that they'd been uh, not only introduced in Moseley but were also being introduced in another part of Birmingham which had a large Muslim population, as Moseley and the adjacent area of Spark Brook do. So this is a story that grew and, and became quite a famous story, eventually picked up by The Guardian, about how uh, Muslim areas of Birmingham, areas with large Muslim populations, uh, were being spied on uh, by the police, n not just by, with ordinary CCTV cameras, uh, but with special automatic number plate recognition cameras, and that this was seen ultimately as an attempt to spy specifically on the Muslim community. Um, so uh, as part of that investigation I liaised with local councillors, uh, I liaised with the police and I, I liaised with, with the audience of the stirrer who were willing to come forward and were offering all sorts of information. Uh, one of the interesting ways in which that story developed is that it did spawn uh, other websites. Uh, a guy called Steve Jolly created his No to CCTV website which again started developing its own following and that started generating photographs being submitted to it, people would uh, contact that website and Steve was very good at sharing his information with me. Uh, the Guardian's Paul Lewis then stepped in at a time uh, when we'd sort of hit a, a, a brick wall with the investigation. We'd already established that uh, there was something untoward going on here and that the police hadn't consulted properly and there was something curious about the budgets uh, by which these CCTV cameras had been, had been obtained and installed and we'd already established uh, that, the, that the consultation process which West Midlands Police had gone through was virtually non-existent, it was hugely flawed. Uh, what the Guardian were able to do, uh, using I think freedom of information and using their contacts, was then to establish the specific budget in the Home Office, the anti-terrorism budget, through which these cameras had been funded. So it was very much a, an organic and a jigsaw process with lots of people collaborating but establishing the idea that there were certain communities in Birmingham who needed a level of surveillance over and above that of, of the population at large.